everyone, I'm Jack, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, donut connoisseur, and as you can see uh, right below me, we have a work with me stream today on this Friday. So happy Friday, hope you're having a great start to your weekend, um, and if you would like to work with me, go ahead and download that starter file in the description, and you can feel free to work along with me using 3D. In Illustrator, we're going to be designing a game interface, or if you just want to work and lurk and get ready for the weekend, feel free to do that as well and just uh, chill out with me. All right, so once you open up your Illustrator starter file, because there's actually a couple of files in there, there's going to be a, um, a couple of SBSAR, those are texture files, we'll get into it, don't worry. Um, but I've got this starter file prepared for you in Illustrator, and it is going to be a game interface. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to combine a couple of my areas of expertise and create a little UI design for you so that we can create some um, 3D icons. We're going to be creating game inventory. So think of like potions and magic and we're getting into a little bit of Wade's realm here but <laughs> let me know in the chat what kind of items we should add to our inventory and we can jot them down on the list as we go. I've also got in here some resources um, if you want to learn a little bit more about um, 3D, uh, you know, an intro to 3D space. I've got fonts and colors, uh, Adobe fonts and Adobe colors if you feel like you want to redesign the interface that I've kind of put together for you here, as well as a link to the substance um, materials if you want to go check those out. And I'm going to show you all that stuff as we kind of go along here. But to give you an overview, um, I've got this interface designed for you. If we look at our layers panel and these guides are annoying you or you don't want to see them, just uh, hide that layer and you can get a, a nice look at our interface here. Um, but you might want to keep those guides because I've got a working layer over here. We're going to design our library of icons. So this is where we're going to put everything. Um, these guides, they're not going to show up when you export your file. They're just for your reference. And that's what we're going to use to kind of size, create a library, basically. And the other thing you're going to want to make sure that you've got open in your file here is the 3D materials panel, panel under uh, the view menu. So I've got that open since we're going to be primarily focusing on that today. So we're going to start out relatively... Uh, we're going to ramp up in complexity. So to begin, we're going to be looking at creating a little health bar down here. So we need some like 3D hearts, right? And if we take a look, I've got a little uh, guide for you if you need help orienting, orienting yourself in 3D space in Illustrator. Um, it's a little bit abstracted. Uh, technically, the Z is coming towards you, um, but it's a little bit hard to visualize if I do that since, you know, then you just see a little dot that says three or Z, not three. Um, we are working in 3D. And um, the Y axis is going to be up and then the X axis is going to be, you know, to the side. So if you kind of need to orient yourself, this is a good way to do it. Um, now, with a 3D um, little heart here, we're going to use an inflate, which is kind of the easiest one to visualize in my in my opinion. Oh, Umicorn's here. Umicorn, I'm glad you're here. I know you will be loving the stream. Uh, Umicorn does a lot of isometric work, um, which is a type of 3D projection, but I digress. We're going to start with some hearts, and there's a couple ways you can go, go about doing this. I'm just going to use what I've got here and use an offset path. So we're going to go object path offset to create our heart shape. Now, when I'm working in 3D, I like to think like Obviously, we're working in two dimensions, and then we're applying a 3D effect. So I like to say, and this isn't like the best example, but it's kind of the best I got, that we're making a blueprint. So our 2D is going to be our blueprint of what our 3D um, object eventually becomes. And with an inflate, our, three, our blueprint is actually going to be very similar to our 3D object. So we're just going to create a fill here. I'm going to make it pink because, you know, it's got to be a pink heart. And then under object, I'm just going to click on inflate. And that's just going to create, it basically an inflate like puffs up your object. It adds like a little bit of air, um, like inflating a balloon. Um, and in fact, uh, if we take a look at our settings here, um, the two primary ones we're going to be working with are depth and volume. Now, if I rotate this a little bit, um, you can see what depth does. And depth kind of like um, extends out our image, kind of like pulls it out. Again, it's pulling it on the Z axis. So if we just have it kind of front facing, like it starts and you increase the depth, you're not actually going to see anything because it's pulling it on that Z axis towards us. So I don't actually need to have that pulled out very far since we're just going to keep it in that front view. And you can see down here at the bottom, this is where you can actually, there's some presets for rotation. Um, you can also use these to rotate if you want to. Um, or you can just use this little widget here to kind of freeform it if you'd like. 
And then the one we're going to be looking at primarily is volume. So with the um, inflate, volume is the one that's going to increase or decrease the um, amount of like air inside of our uh, little heart balloon, essentially. <laughs> um, and then if we wanted to, like, let's say we made some like floating hearts and they were kind of rotated in perspective, um, we could inflate both sides and that's going to make a cute little, especially with the um, depth turned down, that's going to make a cute little like little sprinkling of hearts, you know what I mean? Maybe you just got a little heart container and uh, that was the animation that played. All right, the next thing I'm going to go over and I'm going to talk about, I'm actually going to skip materials. We're just going to go to lighting. So lighting materials kind of work together. You can think about them as like when you update one, the other one, they're going to have an impact. They like pull and push on each other, right? So under the lighting, pa lighting panel, this is where we're going to affect the lighting specifically on the individual object that you have selected. And we've got some presets up here at the top. We've got this crazy looking widget. It's a little bit overwhelming, but if you think about the first kind of top half of this as like a spotlight, um, this is like a spotlight on your object. And we can actually have multiple spotlights, but all these settings are in relation to that first initial spotlight that we have created by default. Um, and if you want to, we can just go up here and click on the presets. We've got a, uh, and you can see as I click on the presets, it's actually moving that little dot around um, our 3D little sphere here. Um, to show us where the light is actually placed, um, you know, in our 3D scene. And actually, if I rotate this around, um, it actually is going to rotate with my object. So that little plane there is going to be like a nice plane frame of reference um, for the uh, position of the light as we're kind of adjusting our 3D uh, heart as well as our lighting. So we can always kind of know where our lighting is placed. So I'm just going to start with an upper left hand light up there. And then down here at the bottom, the rest of these, a little bit of, they're a little bit self-explanatory. Some of them are maybe confusing. Intensity is going to be the brightness of our light, how intense it is. Um, the rotation, when we edit that, it's actually, you'll see it'll move our um, position on our circle. And then these other two, this is where I think people get a little bit thrown off. So the height and the softness, again, these are very similar ideas. If we increase the height, we're actually increasing the height if you imagine we're looking top down at this heart, we're pulling the light away. So it's getting farther away. And when I have it as far out as possible, an illustrator here, you're going to see that my light has spread way out. It's, it increases the fall off on our 3D object. And if I pull it all the way down, so it's as now I put the light as close as possible. Think about it like a flashlight, right? The closer you bring a flashlight, the more intensely concentrated the light gets on the, the object and the smaller the area of the light is. If you pull it all the way up so it's as far away, the height's as far away, it's going to be really soft and it's going to cover the whole shape of our object. And Brad has a, um, is it, yes, is there a way to set inter interface defaults so that they stay the same for every item that you make from this point on? I'm going to actually show you that. We could do that in two different ways. We can either make a group and apply our effects to the group and everything that we put inside of that group is going to have the same 3D appearance effect applied to it or we can save it as a graphic style. So let me just kind of pull it back here. We're going to bring it back. Let's get it back to our default here. Um, and the last one down here is just, the, there's well, actually two more, is ambient light. So if we turn this off, this actually removes like, you could think of it like the sun, um, an overall lightness. So it's an overall light or dark, right? So it, it's kind of like the sun in our scene. It's just kind of giving everything kind of an overall lightness to it. And we can obviously increase or decrease the intensity on that. Um, the last one here, and I'm actually going to need to pull off my shape in order to kind of show you what this one does, is shadows. And um, with the shadows, um, you're going to see that the, you can't, the, the thing that controls the shadows is actually going to be the lighting, especially the um, height. So as we increase the height farther away, our, our light, our, um, our shadow is going to decrease in size. Remember, this is an upper left hand light. So our shadow is going to be on the lower right, our cast shadow. And um, as we pull it um, clo closer to our, our shape, it's going to extend out that uh, shadow. So um, let's just kind of bring it back up here. The two parameters that we have to adjust are the distance from object, um, which if we were kind of putting it, like if we moved it to be below, it's maybe a little bit easier to see. You can see now it's kind of like moving farther away from my object. Um, it's a little bit harder to see from this view because um, it's, uh, whatchamacallit, what am I looking for? It's, um, 
it's like right on top of the shape. And then the shadow bounds here. So the shadow bounds, you can think of it like um, a mask. So if we if we really pull our shadow bounds in and we have a really long shadow, it's gonna clip. So you wanna have that shadow bounds um, up higher if you've got a longer um, shadow. All right, so that's a general overview of the um, lighting panel. The other thing that we can do is we can apply multiple lights and we can add color to our lights. And this is gonna help style and keep our style consistent on all of our 3D objects. So if I go up here, um, the first thing that I want to do is I maybe want to add like a warmer light. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to add like a, a warm light. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to change the whole look and feel of my illustration. It's going to make it feel very warm, right? Um, which is great. And let's add a second light now. So you can see I've got my first light selected here. I'm just going to add another one. And you can see that it just kind of places another dot on here. And I can pull this down here. Um, and this time we'll go in and let's add the opposite. Let's give it some cooler shadows. So I'm going to add in like a, a purple. Let's go maybe something like this. And I'll increase the ten intensity. So now you can see that we're kind of able to control a little bit more the um, shadows and the, the highlights by using colored lights in conjunction with the base color of our um, original uh, object here. And um, there's one other thing I want to talk about before we get any farther, and that is the ray trace um, rendering. You can enable this, uh, a bit of a warning that it is going to cause your computer to um, maybe work a little bit harder um, since it is a more complex lighting calculation. Um, but when you turn that on, um, you'll notice I've got this softness um, item down here, and this is going to just soften the light. It's similar, you know, kind of similar to what I was talking about before with the fall off with the height. Um, this is just going to soften. Um, in particular, I've got the second light selected, so um, it's going to either make those shadows a lot stronger. Actually, it might be easier if I switch to the other light to show you since I have that one uh, affecting most of the shape here. So we'll bring up the intensity, and then if we bring up the softness, it's going to, you can see that it completely blurs out that shadow, right? Um, so now my, um, or my shadow, blurs out that light. So it makes that light really, really soft and like spreads a lot. Versus if I bring it down, it's going to, again, concentrate that light and make it a lot more um, focused on like us, like you can see our, our, sh our highlights are um, sharper, uh, more specular. So that's a general overview. I'm actually going to turn this off. So while you're working in 3D, you're going to probably be turning on and off things a lot. You're going to be turning on and off the ray trace render settings just because it's difficult to like work with the objects um, with that turned on. So once I'm kind of satisfied with that, I'm just going to turn it off. You know, we don't need to see it. It does change the way that it looks, but you can think of this as like a preview mode, right? Okay, so I mentioned um, to answer Brad's question, um, we're going to add this as a graphic style. So in my graphic styles panel here, I'm just going to add this in here. So we'll pull uh, this up here. And when I do that, it's going to keep all the same 3D settings that I use. So it's going to keep my shadow, my lights, my materials. It's going to keep the object uh, um, rotation and um, the uh, inflate settings. So for example, if I wanted to create like another heart here, and let's actually just, let's do this. Let's, I'm going to copy and paste this. Um, and then we'll split it in half with another shape. So maybe this is like a, and I'm actually, for the sake of this, I'm going to clear my um, appearance uh, because that'll show you what it would be like if you didn't have an appearance on this. So I'm going to use the Pathfinder, right? And let's clear the appearance on this too. All right, so now we just have half a heart, and let's say we lost the appearance. Um, if I click on the graphic style, it's then going to apply the settings I had before with my 3D um, effects right onto that heart. So I created a new kind of heart here, a half heart here. It's, you know, a health bar. Maybe you have a piece of a heart or something like that. So there you go. And Alejandro's saying, before I did it with the mesh tool, I'm currently the 3D tool, super fast. Yeah, it can be super fast to put these together. Um, and it does give you like a really unique style. And welcome, Emma. Um, can you have to view the windows with one, um, one on with one and one with ray tracing off? I could um, enable the heart, one of these hearts to have it on and one to have it off. There's no way that I know of to like have like a split view um, where you can see like you can see like ray tracing. It it just you just have to like turn on and off that little um, that little option there. Okay, so we've got our little heart. Let's get into some of our icons here now. So the first that I think I'm gonna 
talk about is I'm gonna go over, let's do, well, let's see. We could do a crystal or we could do a um, potion. Let's do a crystal. Um, so this is where the, uh, the, um, the blueprint idea starts to come into play, right? So, you know, we could draw out a uh, crystal and I do have, I should mention this, um, under my appearance settings, I have new art has basic appearance checked off. Um, and that's intentional because it kind of lets you, if you were working on something and you did want to keep the style, um, you can just kind of like draw organically with the, the pen tool. And it's actually going to keep that style setting that you had, the appearance, uh, the appearance um, attribute from the 3D and materials um, applied as you're kind of drawing. So it can be a really helpful thing to have on. Um, in this case, I don't really need it on, so I'm just going to, again, clear my appearance. And um, so we're going to work on a crystal now. And this is going to use an extrude instead of a um, inflate. So it's a little bit more advanced. So we're going to go over here to our extrude. And with the extrude, our extrude, our depth, again, is it's extruding along the z-axis here. So we can extrude out our shape along the z-axis to make it longer. And I picked a hexagon to start, or, you know, you can pick any kind of polygon, um, because it already has, like, that faceted look. So we're trying to plan ahead, like, what... 2D shapes can I use and modify in order to get that 3D shape that I want. So we're starting with the um, hexagon to give us that faceted look, right? So now we've got some facets to our shape here. I'm just kind of rotate it around a little bit. Um, let's, there we go. That looks good to me. All right, and um, there's one other thing. Actually, let's do this. Let's delete this. I'll show you the other way I like to work, and that is using Command G to make a group and then applying the extruded to the group. And the reason that I like working um, this way is because sometimes you want to add multiple items to a group that all have the same appearance attribute applied to them. So if I create another um, shape here, again, I have my appearance. Oh, no, I kept it. All right. Um, I can just take this, cut this shape, go into my group here under my layers panel. And I paste it inside of that group. Or we just drag it in. You can see it's going to have the same um, settings as the other shape that I drew. So it's a, another way to kind of keep your um, everything consistent. So uh, anyways, moving on to the um, 3D uh, crystal here, we're going to use a bevel for this. So I'm going to turn on my bevel. And the first one that comes up is classic. There's a whole bunch in here, like some of them get real fancy. Um, but for this, um, the classic bevel is going to work out nicely because it's going to give us those points um, that we would get on a crystal. And so if you pull up the width, the width is kind of like how far in the um, the uh, bevel goes. So if I pull it all the way out, you're going to see it's going to, again, bring my object completely flat. And if I pull it all the way up, it's going to bring that um, bevel all the way in on my um, endpoint here. And then the other thing we can kind of play with is the height. So if we want it to be uh, pulled farther out or we wanted it, you know, uh, more shallow. So they, again, these kind of work together, both of these options here. Um, you can also repeat it if you wanted to add like steps. Um, it's a little bit hard to see maybe in this color. Let's change it to like pink. If you wanted to have like a stepped appearance, but we don't actually want to do that for our crystal. And the other option that we're going to check on here um, is going to be the bevel on both sides. It's going to give us the bottom shape as well. All right, so that's looking pretty good as far as a crystal is um, concerned in terms of the shape. Now we can go in here um, and we could uh, apply the same kind of lighting settings. In fact, again, we could probably grab um, this guy, although we'd have to go into here. We'd have to do another extrude. We'd have to pull it out. There we go. But we would be able to keep um, our lighting. And maybe we want to keep our lighting for this. And we'll pull on our bevel, bring up our width, bevel both sides. There we go. Um, so now we've got our crystal here, you know, and we could change the color. Like maybe instead of pink, we want to go like blue, right? This is a magic crystal. Do not affect my base object. That's okay. I'm actually going to bring in um, a material at this point. So um, let me go ahead and do that real quick. I was just checking the chat to make sure we didn't have any questions. So I did put in your folder um, a couple materials. There was a, um, they were SBS AR materials and uh, there was like a stylized tree trunk one, which I actually got from the Substance website. So let me pull that up really quickly. On the Substance website, and I included a link 
um, in your resources to where you can find these. It's just substance3d.adobe.com slash assets. In this case, I have it set up to be filtered to show me the SBSAR materials, which are the specific type of materials that Illustrator takes. There are other types of substance materials that you can create that are a little bit more advanced, but um, if you're looking for substance materials, you can actually open up this filter panel here. Let me find it. And you can click on free assets, and that's going to give you free um, substance materials that you can work with. And that's actually where I pulled, um, and I didn't, uh, I just pulled it for you, um, the tree trunk material. Oh, here it is. Found it for you. Um, which, you know, I, I just wanted to pull some materials that I thought made sense for the process that we're doing today. Like, we've got, you know, we're going to have, like, wood things and maybe stone and, like, this crystal material that I made. So I made the crystal material um, in Substance Sampler, which is kind of like a, um, a capture from you know, making 3D materials. Uh, you can actually use Capture and bring the things you capture um, with Capture app into um, Sampler. And then with Sampler, you can actually like build on top. So you can apply these different um, filters basically on top of your base material to manipulate the way that it looks or add new like appearance attributes. You can think of it like the appearance panel in Illustrator. So if I go over here and I click on add materials, I'm just going to add my material right here, this crystal rough. Now I do have to warn you, this material is using a opacity map. And when I apply it to my crystal, it's actually going to disappear. Um, in this particular case, because of the opacity map, I do need to have on ray trace rendering in order for this to show up. Um, so. You can see what it looks like, and you can kind of get a little bit of a preview. It's a little bit hard to see in here, but you can see that that I've got like so, these faceted areas of light and dark. And the way I'm, we're not going to get into a whole substance um, stream today, but if you have substance sample and you want to play around with this, you can paint these maps in Photoshop. So you can open up Photoshop and you can paint just like you would paint a mask in for like an opacity mask either in Photoshop or Illustrator with like black and white. Um, you can do that to create these maps and it will um, create areas and it might be hard to see the way that I have it placed but it's actually semi-transparent so if we drag it down here there are areas that are semi-transparent on this crystal um, and, that, and, and you can only really achieve this kind of a look by using the, the substance material so um, highly recommend uh, stay, sampler if you want to check it out um, so let's let's assemble some so we've got one crystal here um, let's kind of make like a cluster of them for our little icon here and scale it down and I'm going to copy it and um, we can just kind of, so we got another copy here. Again, we could add this to our um, graphic styles if we were concerned and we wanted to like have a different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, if we wanted to uh, make changes to it um, or if we were concerned about like starting something new and needing to come back to it, we can always add it as a graphic style and apply it again. But I want to show you something else about the blueprint uh, concept that we talked about. So I'm actually going to turn off, and I don't know why my um, my lighting here does not seem to like the uh, material that I chose. So I'm actually going to, or it doesn't want to use the base color that I chose. But that's okay. We'll just go with pink crystals for now, and I can troubleshoot that later. It might have to do with the lighting itself, um, and I might need to like clear the lighting to get our blue crystal back. But that's okay. Oh, there we go. We have a little bit of it coming through. It might just be too strong of a light. Okay, so let me hide the 3D materials in the appearance panel. And what you can start to do is you can actually start to manipulate these shapes a little bit. And that's where you get into like, how can I, um, how can I kind of make this look a little bit more organic? And then let's show it here. Ooh, there we go. I think it is pulling in some of the color, but for some reason those lights are just really strong. Um, and then we can go in here as well. Let's kind of like really manipulate this around. So you can see I'm changing the uh, positioning of those facets to give it a little bit more of a organic look. And then under the object, I can also like adjust the depth. We can bring that down. We can pull the height out a little bit. We can pull the width down. It's really just a matter of adjusting it to, to your kind of like liking here. Um, and the other thing that I like to do with this, let's pull this. So now we've got like two crystals next to each other. Um, 
We can rotate it around. Maybe we pick up some more of that blue. There we go. All right, the other thing that I like to do is, like I mentioned before with having the, like drawing with the 3D effect, um, I'm going to just click now and create some really organic shapes. Oh, there we go, there's my blue. I must have just had, it must be something with the, the lights. I might need to just adjust the intensity down. We can look at that in a sec. And um, for this, I'm just gonna bring it down all the way. So we can make these little like, little fragments, almost like our, um, you know, our crystal here is made up of different, like, f uh, small bits that have broken off or something like that. Um, you know, it's, uh, it just kind of gives it, it, like, adds to the story, right? It makes it look a little bit more, brings it to life, right? Those are the little details. And honestly, what you could also do, and what I'd probably also do um, for a project like this, is I'd incorporate two-dimensional elements, too. And so we could grab, like, our, um, a path here. Um, and we could create like this, like a magical little like swirl. It's gonna add the material, but if I just kind of pull it off here. And we get rid of the 3D materials, right? You know, we can increase this up a bit. I'm checking to see in the chat. Looks like an Elder Scrolls uh, soul stone. That's great. Yeah, we were. I feel like we were just talking about. Um, were we just talking about Elder Scrolls on Behance recently? Um, so we can add like a little bit of magic to this right as well, um, and I think we can use an intertwine with this So let's grab the uh, Well, actually no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it today. We're just gonna bring like the one of these crystals in the front of This shape here You know something like that so now we can kind of like start to play with the Give it a, a little bit of magic um, and I'll bring this opa the opacity down on this a little bit as well let me see, where is that? Mm, there we go. You know. Maybe I'd add like a blur to this as well. Oh, you know what else we can do? Speaking of, um, let's add a blur to this. Up, 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 up. Just a little bit. Just like a two pixel blur or something like that. We'll bring it down a little bit in transparency. Actually, let's increase the blur. I'm in very indecisive today, y'all. Actually, my blur doesn't appear to have actually applied. Okay, there we go. Maybe there's like some magic or something happening. All right, and then we can also add a glow to these um, crystals as well. So if I select both of my crystals here, you can apply effects to 3D material, like layer effects. So let's go up here to the, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Stylize outer glow. And we can add an outer glow to this um, as well. So normally I think it would be on normal, um, but in this case we do actually want it on screen. Um, and you know, let's start a little bit lower. Let's start with like five. And I would just kind of like play with these settings um, until I get something that I kind of like. You know, maybe, I don't want it to be too strong and I want it to be pretty soft. So let's go like maybe 25 we'll do like 15. There we go. There we go. So, you know, and, and, and maybe like, let's actually, I think I want to remove the blur from this one. Or not the blur, the uh, outer glow. I'm just put the outer glow on one of them. There we go. So now we have like a little bit of a, let's say this is our crystal icon, because I do want to move on to a couple of other things. And the great thing about this is that we can always kind of come back to this at any point and kind of continue to make updates to it, right? Oh, very Voodoo Val colors, yeah. I mean, that, you know, we want it to be mystical for sure. Um, and also, a little side note, you're going to want to make sure you have scale strokes and effects turned on for this. So in your preferences, make sure that's turned on. Um, that way the 3D effects scale um, as you're kind of putting this together. And also, while we're at it, Let's actually do this. The The lighting situation here is really bugging me. So I'm going to go in here in my, or my uh, lighting panel. I don't know what's going on with my lights. And we're just going to bring the intensity down. There we go. Now we're getting a little bit more of our original base color. I think I just have the intensity turned way too high up on these. So we can get our like blue color back in. 
because I want to show you um, one other thing that we can do here, and that is that we can use. Um, let's maybe turn this off and turn this back on. All right, we can use recolor art with this as well with 3D effects. So let's say we have like two um, different magical crystals. So I'll make a copy here. And then we'll go up to uh, edit, edit colors, and recolor artwork. And now, um, this works with our um, crystal design as well. So we can m move these around to maybe get, I'm looking for like a, there we go, like a greenish kind of crystal. We could also use generative recolor as well if you wanted to go in there and type those in. So you can adjust the um, colors if you wanted to. And then again, all you would have to do is like, I would go in here and I'd probably make these look a little bit different, right? I would make them feel a little bit different. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, while we're at it, like making things look a little bit different, um, for this, let's do this real quick. Let me just pull this back down. We pull the height out. So we're like making these look a little bit different, right? Ooh, too much, too much. Bring it back. Uh, and let's bring the height down a little bit. And we'll just kind of, you know, move these a little bit. All right. And let's go in here. I think. I lost my train of thought. What was I going to do for this to make these look different? I don't remember. Was it the bevel? It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me as we work. It'll come back to me how I wanted to change these. Eventually. Because I, I don't remember right now. I lost it. I lost train of thought. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll remember when we get back, when we continue, as we continue working, how I, how I wanted to change the look and feel of this. It's not a huge deal. Um, I want to move on though. Like, so, like I said, we're, we're kind of, we, we are work, amping our way up to more complex shapes. So let's move on. I don't think we have any, add a big, bit of a zigzag. Yeah, you could do that. You could actually apply some additional effects, um, over top of that if you wanted to. So you could add a zigzag to it, um, as well. But I want to, because we're like already 30 minutes in, I want to move on to a more complex shape um, because I talked a lot about, um, you know, the blueprint idea and I feel like it comes through a lot clearer when we're actually like building up shapes. Odari, welcome. So if I go up here and let's move on. So we've got a couple of, of kind of common items. Let's do like one of these key items. So if we look at our inventory, we've got key items, you got common items. So common items would be things like food, magic, you know, what, you know, other kind of random things, maybe like special, uh, like, you know, things you pick up. So, but the key items would be materials is the word I was looking for. Like common items would be things like materials. Key items would be like your sword, your shield, um, uh, you know, a bow, things that you're, you know, would be very important, you know, key items that you would, you know, use in the game. So I'm going to make a shield because I think it's a really good way to kind of break down and we'll make, we can make sword too. Uh, we're gonna start with our hexagon again. So I'm just gonna drag out a hexagon. I'm gonna clear the appearance again since I don't want to keep that on. And we're gonna rotate it around. And I'm just gonna apply a color to this so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's go with the gray. We'll bring it onto our uh, interface here. And so a shield, um, you could do a round shield. You could do, I mean, there's a whole bunch. You could do a lot of research and look up, like there's different types of shield shapes. Um, and also like historically, um, throughout time. Uh, but I'm just going to do like a simple, like one of these, one of these dealies, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm just making, I'm blocking in the basic shape that we need. Um, and I'm going to build on top of that. So this is our blueprint and let's go ahead and grab, um, an anchor handle here. You know, we can like round this out if we want to. And this is actually where I'm going to use a group. We'll round out the sides a little bit. Okay, and then let's go in here. I'm gonna use an extrude. Just kinda get things going. And I don't actually need uh, much depth to this. So this is kind of like the back of our shield. We're starting from the back and working um, 
forward. Could an action be created and thus modify it? Um, potentially, you could use um, an action, but you would have to have things that are very, that you want to be consistent. Um, so if you were creating something and you had created like a style that you wanted to be repeated across um, you know, multiple uh, designs, like, you know, that crystal texture that we created. Um, you could potentially do that. And, oh, you know what? I said I was going to do this on a group, and then I didn't. So let's do Command-G to make a group, and we're going to apply the effect to that. We'll bring the depth down. Honestly, you could probably go to zero, which is just going to make it like a plane with no depth added to it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that group. And I'm going to use an outline. So we're going to change this to an outlined path. We'll add a little bit of depth to it so we can actually see. And then I'm going to bring this up. So you can already see that I've kind of created like an out outside shape over top of my the back of my shield. And when I have that set up, I'm going to use another bevel here. And we're just going to use, we could use honestly any of these. It depend, like I said, it depends on how fancy you want to get. Um, you know, if you wanted to have like really fancy shield with like double outlines or um, honestly really any of these could be fun to play with but we're gonna just stick with classic and I'm gonna bring it all the way up so the width is a hundred percent up um, that's gonna like create that peak where they meet in the middle um, you know that's that shields kind of have they have kind of like that peak right uh, but you certainly don't have to do it this way you could really do it any way that you want I'm gonna bring the depth down a little bit more bring the depth down um, is gonna like bring the depth down and bring the height down um, are going to let us see those seams a little bit stronger um, because more um, light is going to be hitting them so you're going to see those points um, versus if we bring the height up it actually like you, you start to like lose the corners so that's kind of the decision I'm making there and I'll bring this up a little bit more that can be a little bit wider let me know if you have any questions in the chat by the way Penny says, it's been a good Friday of streams and pals, that's for sure. Yes, it has been a good Friday stream. Kicking it off with um, Val and Cody, and we had Annika. I mean, it's been a good day. All right, let's go in here. And we had uh, Izzy and, and Phil as well. All right, so we've got the inside, we've got our outside. I want to duplicate this one more time because I want to add, like, wooden um, boards. So, like, shields have, like, two the two pieces of metal and there's like some wooden like boards to reinforce them. So I'm gonna create that. So I'm gonna make a copy of my original shape here and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna hide the 3D materials. And here I'm gonna um, go in and I'm gonna create some uh, lines and I'm gonna use the Pathfinder to kind of split out my original shape here into those like wooden boards. We can use a blend, I'll go to uh, blend here, make, Object, blend, um, blend options. I'm going to bring this down, maybe like to three. I'll go to two. I want the effect to be, you know, I want it to be apparent. You can see the, the um, steps here. And we're going to, like, the, the individual boards. That's what I mean by steps. And we're going to uh, expand our blend. And now I'm going to make sure when I do this that I put this inside of my group. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to put my blend inside of my group, and then I'm going to use the, you can use the shape builder, or you can use um, the pathfinder over here. And when I do that, um, oh, you know what, I think I need to ungroup this. Ungroup. Let's go ahead and make another copy. There we go. So now we've kept our three materials applied to that group. Um, I needed to make a copy. The reason I needed to do that additional step there is because I needed to make sure that I was selecting everything inside of the group, but not the actual group itself, um, because I wanted to keep that 3D materials effect on this. So now, when we take a look at all of this together, it's not so apparent. I do need to increase the um, depth on this, because remember I had none. Um, when I increase the depth, you're going to see that our um, our layers are all, they all have the same um, rotation applied to them. So that's kind of like the trick that I use using groups and kind of duplicating groups to kind of keep that. You could also again use a graphic style. Honestly, I kind of alternate between the two. So under swatches, I've actually given you for the sake of time also a wood grain texture. So you have two options. We can use the wood grain texture if you wanted something flatter. So I created, it's just a pattern swatch. 
Um, and you can go in and edit the pattern swatch if you wanted to change the colors. Um, but we'll scale the pattern swatch down a little bit so it's easier to see by turning off transform effects. And 50 actually looks pretty good. Um, I feel like any smaller and it's going to be too hard to see, so we'll leave it at 50. Um, and that's just going to scale the pattern. The other option that we have for our shield is to go in and import that material that I gave you in your folder for the wood. So we can go in here and we can import that stylized tree trunk from the substance site. And you could also use that and apply it um, as a material as well. It's just an option. Um, this one I actually had, when I pulled it, I had in mind more like wooden, um, like carved objects. Um, so there are other wood textures. In fact, I think there's even some in here um, that will give you more of that wood grain kind of a look. Yeah, there you go. There's an option for you. Um, the other thing, I guess I should note this really quickly. So we didn't talk too much yet about materials and I do want to cover that. So let's go back here. Um, so we talked about lighting. We talked about how you can set up multiple lights. Um, you know, we could even go in here and we can set up the same kind of lighting we had. I would recommend probably using swatches if you're gonna have consistent lighting colors that you wanna keep throughout. Um, so we'll just, I'm just gonna pull these colors generally that we had from the other one um, to give it that kind of like purple and, and blue hue. Um, it is kind of in a lot of shadow just based on the rotation that it's on. Um, if I wanted to, I could bring the intensity of these lights up so it was a little bit easier to see. It's making it kind of like too purple though. Here, let's go down here to our um, ambient light and pull it up. Okay, um, what was I going to tell you? Right, so in your materials, there are, your base parameters are going to be pretty consistent across all of the materials. If they're substance materials, if they're, you know, you're just using the base material, they're going to have a roughness and a metallic. And um, it's probably easier to see on the outside portion of the shield, honestly, how these work. So I'm going to try to demo it and see. And if not, we can make another material so I can show you. Actually, let's do this. Let's use a, ro let's add, I want to make sure that we get to the revolve as well. So let's go ahead and pause on this. We can talk about materials by creating a little potion bottle. So I'm going to grab an ellipse. I'm going to drag it on out. Um, and I don't want to, I want to have a, let's clear the appearance here. And we'll just kind of put a white material on this. Now, oh, you know what? Yes, this is what I want to do. Um, actually, the, no, this is not what I want to do. But I am going to show you how the um, revolve works. Because there's, you could make a potion bottle this way. But there's two different ways you could make it. So with the revolve, something you need to keep in mind when you're using a revolve is if you just click on resolve with a circle thinking you're going to get a sphere, you're not. You're going to get a donut. And that's because how the revolve works, if we take a look at our original kind of diagram here, revolve is taking the original object and it's spinning it around the y-axis here. Um, so if you have a complete circle and you spin it around, what you're actually going to get is a donut because it's a complete circle already. If you want a sphere, how that works is you're going to have to delete that corner and join it. Now, it does have two sides that you can rotate from. So I deleted the right edge and we can see that it's um, offset um, from the left. So we want to switch that to the right edge and that's going to give us a sphere. So you're going to want to like switch that around so you get a sphere. So we could make a potion bottle this way if we wanted to have like a really round potion bottle. Um, the other option that we can use is we can use an extrude. We're gonna wanna change it so that our uh, bottle is kind of facing that way, right? Pull it out and then if this was more like a, I don't know, like a classic potion bottle with a flat bottom, um, I don't even know if that's a classic. <laughs> But we can add, use our bevel again and we can use a round and leave the bottom flat. So, um, and again, we can adjust the height, um, pull the width down to kind of get a nice domed shape here and then pull the uh, depth down and get it a little bit shorter. So there you go. For And um, I'll probably use a graphic style for this, but I wanna get to materials. So um, let me grab the, let me do another, I'm gonna do this really quickly real fast speed run we're gonna remove this no i don't i want to remove the bevel we're gonna scale it down 
we go. We'll pull out the shape here. I keep, I'm like, keep moving it up too much. Let's pull it down. There we go. All right, so we've got like, maybe this is one of our potion bottles, right? Um, we can do the same thing over here. And I'm gonna, you can use a little bit of a trick here, and that's actually what I'm gonna do um, for uh, glass. So for glass materials, um, they're a little bit tricky to do in Illustrator, but I have a little bit of a hack for you. Um, and I'm just gonna focus on one of these. So we're only gonna focus on this bottle for the time, for just for the sake of time. And um, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select both of these um, shapes and in my materials panel, um, for these. I'm just gonna start with this bottom one. We've got roughness and we've got metallic and what those mean are Basically the roughness is how like s How smooth or rough something is but you can kind of think about it like as I um, Pull up the roughness. I'm making it sort of like a like a soft Like a silicone material, you know, like a material that has like texture to it, but it, it's like soft. It has like a, the, the um, highlights are very, and shadows are very soft on it, right? Versus if I pull it down, when I pull it, I make it less rough, it's going to make it like a hard plastic. So if you kind of imagine that, it hopefully helps you kind of visualize how it's going to look. And it probably would help if I adjusted this parameter up as well. Okay, so you can see here, now I've got like a hard plastic with a really sharp specular highlight. And as I pull it up, it's gonna soften it out to spread that highlight and give us softer um, highlights and shadows. I think people have a hard time with this particular set of sliders because they're so kind of abstract and the words are very similar, but the top one's gonna control like how um, soft or, or hard your object is basically. And then the metallic is how reflective the material is. So if we pull it up, you can see that when I had the roughness brought down, um, we got stronger um, specular highlights, so and it also got darker, so basically more contrast overall. Sh strong highlights, strong uh, high contrast shadows, um, when you've got the metallic brought all the way up, and obviously when we bring the roughness down, we're making a smooth, shiny object, right? That's the idea here with strong highlights. Uh, versus the opposite uh, direction. Now we've got a very soft object, so if you wanted to make something look like it was made out of clay or like soft plastic, um, that's what you kind of go for there. So let's go ahead and set this up to be sort of um, shiny with uh, strong highlights. Um, checking the chat. Jack has charms ever since she brought in the crystal. Well, I hope you make good use of that material nonetheless. Um, okay, so now we've got our main glass. I'm going to add this as a... Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it over here because the settings are easy enough to kind of get matched. Okay, so now we've got like the neck of our bottle and we've got the um, base of our bottle. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to decrease the opacity on this. So we're going to make this a little bit transparent. Right? So that's already kind of looking like glass, but there's one more trick um, to make it look like double walled glass. We're going to go to Object, um, Path, set path and we're gonna bring it down so now I've got like the inner walls of our glass and the outer walls and I actually like to make this dark so that the outside of our glass um, is lighter than the inside you know it doesn't need to be that dark and I'd probably pull this down just a little bit let's make this a little bit stronger um, and I'd probably pull the neck of the bottle on top. No, I wouldn't. I would leave it. Um, and then you could add, this is where you could add your um, stopper as well. So if you wanted to, again, create like a, a little revolve here. I'm going to delete um, out the edge here. I'm just going to delete out that edge and then we'll pull this side in. And I'm going to do a little revolve with our, uh, where did I put that? Our little material applied. So we're gonna go back up to a revolve and we can rotate it. Let's make sure we've got it on the right edge. There we go, join. And we've got like a little stopper for our potion bottle, right? We'll make sure that's on top. And um, we can also add a little bit of a, I'm going to copy and paste this, and we're going to use our crystal material again. And we're going to go ahead and decrease the uh, depth 
on this and I'm gonna remove the bevel and we'll go ahead and make this just red just so we can see it for now. So now we've got a little bit of potion in our bottle as well. Um, and I just use that same shape again because I'm keeping the um, everything consistent uh, in terms of the perspective and everything. So that's kind of my little trick to you today. If you take anything away from this, I hope you take that away. You copy and paste, use the appearance panel, um, etc. All right, so there we go. We've got a little thing here. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about materials, uh, since we're on the subject, probably don't want the core transparent though. Oh no, we don't. That was a mistake. My bad. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> um, for this here, oh, and it looks like I have ray trace rendering. I'm going to turn that off. We don't need that on. Um, for this here, for the substance materials, you can see they've got a couple more parameters. Um, so if you wanted to, I remember, you guys, I remember I was going to tell you before about materials and the crystal. If you want to add variation to your crystal, um, even more variation, you can change the material settings. So in here, I have these repeats. Um, that determines how how many how many times the pattern or the um, the opacity mask repeats across the design. So if I increase it way up, you're gonna see it's gonna add tons of ripples to it. It almost looks like water, right? Um, and if I bring it back down, um, it's gonna add less. So it's gonna be a little bit less faceted. So if you wanted to add a little bit more variation to your crystals as well, you could use the same technique here um, to kind of adjust the material properties um, for that. And I think I need to reset here. There we go. All right, so we got a little potion bottle. I have like three minutes left to finish this, um, but I want to show you one more trick. Um, and this sh this should be all the tricks you need to kind of like continue this process if you were kind of playing along. Um, and I'm gonna copy one more time this shape here. And you're like, what are you doing, Jack? We just set that up to be transparent, and we're gonna very quickly super speed run um, a little label for this. We're gonna make a little potion bottle label. I'm gonna grab my uh, corner radius here. I'm gonna pull it in. We're gonna change this to be like a fancy label design. I'm gonna grab a heart from our other one so that it looks like, you know, a little heart potion. We're gonna remove our 3D effects. We're gonna just add a little, well, actually just make this, let's see, let's make this like a red. It's actually blue, so we'll go with blue. It's a blue heart potion, why not? Um, and I'm just gonna center all of this. All right, so we got a little label. We're gonna add this to our uh, symbols panel, because we need to have this as a symbol in order to map it onto our artwork. And with it as a symbol, real quick, I'm gonna select the uh, the bottle shape. We're gonna go into the graphics panel and I'm going to add it as a graphic. And I'm gonna check on invisible geometry. And so that is gonna let me um, keep, I need to rotate this around and I just scale it down. And now we've got like a little label that matches the perspective and fits onto our bottle. Um, let's rotate it here since I'm having trouble with the corner there. I have too many, too many ray trace effects applied. So there we go. Now we've got like a little label and honestly, this would just be placeholder until I uh, got in and like made a, a label that was maybe a little bit fancier. You can go in and you can double click on this to um, edit your symbol if you wanted to and it would update across your graphics. All right. So I think that's all the time that we have today. I tried to speed run as much as possible. Feel free to go through here and make all of your objects and then you can throw them into your um, scenes here. I've made all of these match the size of the assets you'll need. Um, so the key items are like 144, I think, and then these are like 128. So the sizes are a little bit different. You can scale them up and place them in your interface. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, working along with me today. Um, if you do decide to create some assets, I'd love to see them. You can share them with me on social. You can find it, all of my social links at jackwatson.design uh, slash links. Um, but yeah, there's going to be more live content over me after me. I think Ryan is up next with um, File New, if you want to check that out. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.